All right, class. Thanks for being here. I'm Alex Barris. Today we're talking about touchscreen technology. We'll be talking about where it came from, how it works, and why you should even care. Let's get started. So, just a couple of weeks ago, my cousin April um, was riding her bike to class. But while she was riding her bike, she felt her phone vibrate. But it was like one of the last vibrations, you know? So she knew she had to answer it quick. So she hurried and pulled it out of her pocket. She was on the sidewalk. She tried to answer it, but it wasn't working through her gloves. She couldn't answer the phone. The phone call ended. She never answered it. It all comes down to her phone and her gloves. Why didn't it work? And what if she knew like what kind of touchscreen she was using? I think she would have acted a little differently. So the purpose of this presentation or this teaching is to, one, teach you how to use your touchscreen technology effectively, teach you how it works, and then lastly and most importantly, teach you the components that go into it so you can be a big part of the future. So you can make new touchscreen technology and so you can be a big part in making the world better. In 1965, we have our first sign of touchscreen technology from E.A. Johnson. He makes the first capacitive touchscreen. This uses a layer of electrodes to sense conductivity, which comes from the skin of your finger, which I'll explain more about later. Next, in 1970, we have Dr. G. Hurst, who makes the first resistive touchscreen. Um, this kind of touchscreen uses two different layers, and when they touch each other, um, the device senses that and it shows where it's being touched. Next, in 1982, we finally get touchscreen technology that can allow multiple touches to come on screen. Before this, you can only do one at a time. In 1993, we have touchscreen technology coming into like daily devices. We can see this from IBM and Apple coming out with their devices and we can see here IBM's phone is a little outdated now, but at least they were trying. All right, in 1998, we get the famous Palm Pilot. It emerges into the world. Next, we have Sony, which revolutionizes the capacitive touchscreen. This builds upon Johnson's original discovery. Um, here, we throw in a second or additional layer of electrodes to make it more sensitive and just an all around better touchscreen. All right, by 2011, the world starts getting pretty advanced. Um, here we see Samsung and Microsoft's SUR40. This is an interactive surface computing platform that allows one or more people to use and touch real world objects and share digital content at the same time. Finally, we're here today. Um, Touchscreen technology is used everywhere today from your phones to refrigerators to almost everything. So today, technology with touchscreens is exploding. I've seen bendable touchscreens. I've seen clothing that's touchscreen. I've even seen like a spray that's supposed to make a touchscreen. Um, it's really exploding right now. And for the future, who knows? It's really up to you and me, especially after watching this video. Maybe you'll have some ideas. You can invent something. Um, but I'm totally sure in the future we'll have, you know, transparent phones with touchscreens like in the movies. I'm sure, you know, we'll obviously have better um, designs and better visuals through our touchscreens, as well as durability and longevity. Let's dive in to see how it really works. So touchscreen technology can basically be broken up into five different technologies. There's resistive, surface capacitive, projected capacitive, surface acoustic wave, and infrared. So we'll break these each down individually and see what they're made of. First one we have is resistive. Um, you may remember this one from Dr. G. Hurst, who first came up with this touchscreen technology. So resistive uses two different plates. Uh, you can see from this picture that there's little spacers in between these two plates. They kind of look like little balls. So these balls keep the plates from touching each other. And when someone's finger comes and pushes on it, it collides into the other plate in that specific area. And that's how the device knows it's being pressed. 
Next we have projected and surface capacitive touchscreens. So you'll remember a capacitive touchscreen uses a layer of electrodes and it senses the conductivity of the skin on your finger. So the primary difference between projected capacitive and surface capacitive touchscreens is the projected uses two layers of electrodes, whereas the surface uses a single layer of electrodes. Furthermore, only the projected capacitive touchscreens support multi-touch commands. This is the one with multiple, with multiple layers of electrodes. Next, we have surface acoustic wave, or SAW, S-A-W. Um, SAW technology uses ultrasonic waves that pass over the touchscreen panel. When the panel is touched, a portion of the wave is absorbed. Um, the charge in the ultrasonic waves is processed by the controller to determine the position of where the touch occurred. Last, we have infrared touchscreen technology, or IR. So infrared touchscreens have a perimeter of LEDs or light emitting diodes, and as well as sensors or photo, de photo detectors. So these are constantly emitting and receiving light like in a grid formation across the touchscreen. Then when you put your finger on the touchscreen, it interrupts that light. And the touchscreen is able to detect where the light is being interrupted and it knows that's where it's being touched on the screen. All right, now let's talk about some of the benefits and disadvantages of these different touchscreen technologies. And I will say, please pay attention to this part. There will be a little quiz after, so get ready. With resistive, let's remember that's the one with the two plates. So this kind of touchscreen technology is gonna be super durable. You can use like a glove or a pencil. It can detect almost any object because you just have to push those plates together. So this would be good in like an um, industrious area where people are wearing gloves or have dirty hands. You can just easily press it and push it. But some disadvantages may be it won't always be clear. Um, it's not gonna be as sensitive. You know, you might have to push a little harder. Next we have surface and projected capacitive touchscreens. So these are gonna be pretty similar because they use that same technology of the layer of electrodes and sensing the conductivity of the skin of your finger. However, the projected is gonna be a little bit better in almost every category because it's using more electrodes and more layers to sense that conductivity. So these are gonna be what you find mostly in your phones, um, your tablets, your touchscreen laptops. This is because it has pretty good clarity, it's pretty sensitive to your, your touch, and it's also really durable. So that's good. But the disadvantage to this is you can't answer your phone with gloves like April tried to. Next we have the saw or the surface acoustic wave. This touchscreen technology, as you can see on the chart, is very good in most of the categories, but it's not so good with sensitivity to touch. Um, you can use other objects, but it won't always pick it up. Lastly, infrared touchscreen technology. As you can see in the chart, it's probably the best technology as far as these categories go. I would say one of the disadvantages, however, is it is using those light rays. So pretty much anything can set it off. You know, if you drop a piece of food on your phone, it's gonna activate it. Or if it's in your pocket on your phone and gets bumped around, it's gonna sense that as someone's touching the touch screen. All right, students, thank you so much for attending. I hope you learned a lot about touchscreen <laughs> technology. Deborah, what did I say about your phone?